What's up, Audioholics? Today we're going to be taking a look at a pair of affordable audiophile speakers. What's going on, guys? Today we've got the Triton 5s in from Golden Ear. I've had these in the lobby for about, I don't know, maybe two, three months now. Just haven't gotten around to doing it. But now's the time to do it because I've gone through a lot of my reviews. So we're actually going to hook this up to the Cambridge Edge audio system. But for now, we're just going to unbox these things. They are $1,000 a piece or $2,000 a pair. So we're going to get them unboxed and I'll go over a few tech specs. As for tech specs, each speaker is covered in black speaker cloth. In order to get a better view of the drivers, you'll have to remove the top plate and pull down the speaker sock. Once you've undressed it, you'll find two 6-inch mid-bass drivers in an MTM configuration, mid, tweeter, mid. Between each 6-inch driver is the high-velocity folded ribbon tweeter. These tweeters are used in every Triton speaker, all the way up to their top model. As we move towards the bottom of the speaker, you'll find four 8-inch planner infrasonic sub-bass radiators. That's really fancy for saying passive radiators. There's two on each side. These will help enhance low frequency extension down to 26 Hz. For connections around back, you have one set of gold-plated binding posts. Now these are what I consider a living room friendly sized towers. They're not overly big and overpowering, nor are they tiny. They measure 44 and a quarter inches high by 12 and 3 8 inches deep by 6 and 5 8 inches wide up front and 8 and 1 8 inches wide around back. If you're wondering why the front measures differently from the back, that's because it's got non-parallel front and rear baffles and side cabinet walls. It was designed this way to better control internal standing waves. So it's wider at the bottom than up top and wider in the rear than up front. The front baffles angle slightly back to better align the tweeter at your height when you're sitting down. This should make for simpler speaker placement. Per Golden Ear's website, the recommended power for each speaker is between 15 and 400 watts per channel. The Cambridge Audio Edge W amplifier we'll be using is rated at 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms, so it should have no problems driving the speakers. And I'll be posting a review for the Edge series on my personal channel, Spare Change, so be sure to stick around for that. Connection-wise, I'll be pairing the Edge amp and preamp with a pair of AudioQuest McKenzie XLRs. My speaker cables are a pair of AudioQuest Type 4s. For source material, I'll be streaming high-res audio using the Cobuzz Music Service. If you guys have been following my channel, you know that my reference pair of speakers are the Martin Logan ESLXs. They're not crazy expensive, but they do cost twice as much as the Triton 5s. I'm very familiar and really like the electrostatic sound, so I'll kind of be comparing the Tritons to those. As I mentioned earlier, the Triton 5s have some trickle-down technology from their higher-end brothers, most notably the high-velocity folded ribbon tweeter. This is a modified air motion transformer invented by Oscar Heil. If these look familiar, you can find a variation of these on the Martin Logan Motion series of speakers as well. This works by having a thinly folded diaphragm suspended within a magnetic field. As the current flows through the diaphragm, it moves back and forth like an accordion, albeit a much smaller surface. Now unlike Golden Ear's higher end models, the 5s don't have powered base drivers. Instead, you get 4 8 inch passive radiators and two 6 inch mid base drivers in each speaker, which will get the Triton 5s down to a specified 26 Hz. That sounds like these will have some pretty impressive bass. So of course, I had to throw in some rap and hip hop music on the Cambridge Edge and Q just to test this out. Despite what you might think of them, Kanye's got some pretty killer beats and Love Lockdown is one of them. This track starts off with the 808 drum machine throwing down some repetitious bass drops. If you want to get the full effect of these lower octaves, a subwoofer is definitely recommended. But to my surprise, the Tritons gave me a little taste of that skin tingling low frequency. Now don't get it twisted, they're not going to tingle your skin, but there are shades of what's there. If it wasn't for the dual passive radiators coupling with my room, these speakers would likely be less impressive. Next track I threw in was Renegade by Eminem. That mid bass slam that I'm used to hearing from the ESLXs was noticeably less penetrating. 
I suppose the dual 6 inch mids just weren't up to the task. The type of pop and rap music that's mostly played throughout my house regularly might not be the Five's area of expertise. Hard hitting, tactile, low end response is what I want for the type of music that I listen to, and I feel that these speakers come up short in this area. Now to throw in more audiophile esque recordings, I popped on some tracks from Diana Krall, and I was greeted with a very detailed, lip smackingly breathy, clean presentation. I swear if you sit back and close your eyes, you'll be transported into a sonic landscape that's a lot larger than what the size of these speakers might lead you to believe is achievable. Vocals came through in excellent clarity, placing Diana front and center in a virtual soundstage. The ribbon tweeters were silky smooth and ultra revealing. These are some of the same characteristics that I like so much when listening to a pair of electrostats. There was an almost holographic sense of space, making it feel like I was at a live recording. Eyes closed, lights dimmed, the guitarist is playing to the right, and vocals come right up front. Cymbals appear about a foot back behind the singer, then the piano starts filling in. This is the type of musical presentation these speakers bring into your listening space. This is the type of transparency I get with my Martin Logans. Proper instrumental placement in space, and a believable separation amongst each musician was something I've only heard with more costlier setups. When speakers start to disappear and you're listening to only the music, that's when the speakers are doing something special. I will say that I had to tow in the speakers and aim them directly at me to get that three-dimensional effect. So taking the time to properly tow them in is a very important step. Also, even sitting slightly away from the sweet spot, I still heard a pretty solid even response. So if you want to listen to these with your significant other, you shouldn't have to worry about the soundstage collapsing. Needless to say, I was very impressed with the spacious soundstage the Tritons threw out. I felt the lower end wasn't exactly to my liking, but throwing in a subwoofer should take care of that, and Golden Ear does offer a few subwoofer options. Where the speakers shine is the smooth high-end clarity. These were devoid of any sibilance that I could hear with my time with them, and even with some lower quality MP3s that I played back, these ribbon tweeters took away any harshness. I was really surprised at just how detailed these were compared to my Martin Logans. I will say my ESLXs will deliver a more textured, nuanced listening experience, and I would hope so since they do cost a bit more. But for the Triton's asking price, I got a pretty similar experience. If there is one thing that might be a sore point is the speaker's aesthetics. There are times I like to take off the grills and look at the drivers, and I know a lot of you guys do too. So being covered by a giant sock might not be the most visually appealing thing. But hey, they can all be supermodels. Anyways, I know there are a ton of options from more well-known brands in this price category. But honestly, I do feel you could compare these to speakers costing a lot more. I've heard many times people say the Triton 5s are a revelation, especially when you factor in the price. If you've got a hi-fi shop nearby that carries these, I'd go give them a listen. I think you might be surprised at how awesome the Triton 5 sound. I will close this out by saying that this was the experience that I got with these speakers in my room with the equipment that I had on hand. I'm sure you'll probably hear something different in your room with your equipment. With that being said, if you've heard these speakers or any Golden Ear speakers, then leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think of them. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and keep listening.